Hi everyone, welcome to this week's garden update. Well, the rain has gone, the heat has arrived and all the plants seem to be absolutely loving it. So I thought we'd start off by taking a look at some edibles that seem to be growing very happily. Do you remember those cauliflower plants that I put into the ground quite a while ago now? But I do remember at the time thinking, oh, it's very late in the season. I'm not sure if they will grow. Well, they did. And look at this. I have a few beautiful, massive heads to harvest. There's two here which are ready and the other three are still quite small. Now this one has had a little bit of damage from the snails. That's kind of a bit of a telltale sign there. They've left behind a little gift, <laughs> but still eat this. Just give it a good, decent wash. With the smaller, more immature heads of cauliflower that I'm still waiting to put on a bit more growth before I harvest, I've actually tied up most of the foliage like this. It's just to protect the cauliflower that's in there from the heat of the sun which can cause your cauliflower to develop a bitter flavour. This method of covering the smaller heads of cauliflower until they get to a more decent size like this one here, it's actually called blanching. And another advantage of it is that it helps to retain the white colour. A lot of the older varieties or heirloom varieties of cauliflower tend to change to a more brownish, slightly maybe even a tinge of purple in their colour on their head if they're exposed to too much sun. In these two pots I've got a little bit of an experiment happening. In this one there's ginger and over here there's turmeric. The experimental part is that I bought the pieces from the supermarket from my local IGA and you know what they're actually starting to grow. Look at this. <clears throat> See the way it's starting to put out these little shoots and then if I turn it around you can see a few little small white roots. In this container I have three pieces of ginger roughly about this size and I've just put them in quite shallow actually not very too deep and you know what they seem to be doing okay and then I did the other day have a little root around for some of the turmeric to see if it was still <laughs> even in there and that too is starting to put out these little shoots. I know it's a little bit noisy. I think my neighbor's getting the tree removed, one that was damaged from the storm. Like people are still trying to clear up here. Now, <laughs> I just wanted to say, growing ginger and turmeric, a bit like garlic, it can take quite a long period of time. Approximately nine months, even 10 months. So in a way, it's a bit of a long-term commitment to taking care of those plants but I really think it's worth giving them a go. Okay, I did want to squeeze one more thing in. It's so noisy here. What I wanted to mention was that if you are new to gardening and say you don't have a really big space, growing ginger and turmeric if you live in a hot climate during your summer period is something really great that you can just start off with because they grow fantastic in pots. I love every year trying out some new fruit and veg that I've never seen, let alone tasted before. And this year, one of them is going to be this purple fleshed sweet potato. I have grown your standard orange fleshed sweet potato in the past, but nothing like this one. Plus, I've actually got another one inside the house that I'm gonna grab now and show you. Here it is. It's a white sweet potato. I have never seen one like this before in my whole entire life. I didn't even realize they come in a white color. So I've got them in this glass of water because I'm trying to get it to sprout, to grow some slips. Um, and it will be the slips that I put into the ground to try and grow more of these. I'm over here by the raised garden beds. So the other day I was out here and I got such a fright because there was a snake right down there at the back. I only saw the tail end of it. It looked like either a brown or a red belly. Either way, it's not very good. So I really need to be extra careful now when I'm out here. Here's the girls. Now, while I'm here, I wanna show you this, which is very exciting. 
Look, the sweet peas have kind of bounced back, maybe a quarter of them. See up here? <laughs> and they're flowering again. There's a few more up here on the top. Oh, these girls. Actually, I am dealing with a few pests in the garden as well. I noticed over here on this eggplant, it's covered in these little holes caused by these flea beetles. There is a lot of them. And the other day when I was holding one, it actually jumped off. And that's where they're given their name. They do hop like little fleas, which is kind of, I don't know, a little bit gross, I guess. <laughs> Rob, you were right about the carrots because they are starting to go to flower. You take a look here, you can see on this one, you can see in there, it's starting to develop a flower bud. So I may leave a few in so I can collect some seeds, but with the others, I probably will have to pull them out. My friend gave me a bunch of everlasting daisies that she had in some pots for quite some time. Um, they got very old and leggy. <laughs> There's only a bit of foliage up on top. So I have about eight in this bed. I'm not 100% sure if they will survive, but I'm hoping they will and maybe along the stem here they'll start to fill out. But you know what? I just want to see what happens. It's always good to have a few little experiments going on in the garden. Over here beside the lemon tree in the original dahlia patch, I got a few of my new tubers in the ground. I think there's about 16 in here and I have put them very close together because I just find the first year of growing dahlias they don't tend for me at least to grow a huge amount so I feel like this will be enough space for them and I've also set up this little system well it's meant to be corralling it's probably not perfect just some stakes with twine and um, all crossed over just to help hold them in place when they do grow larger when I was in here putting in the twine do you know what I did I was so annoyed at myself I stood on this dahlia tuber. I broke its top off with my boot. Oh, I'm gonna put this back in a pot, but I don't think it's gonna grow now because it's missing the top section. However, I did manage to grab another dahlia and just pop this in its place. The thing is, I've got no idea which one this is because remember I lost all the tags in the storm. You can see everything is really starting to fill out nicely. I do have a whole drift of these marigolds here and I've actually been coming out every couple of days and just snipping off these flowers, which may seem a bit harsh, but I really find it helps because I don't want these plants when they're still quite small, putting so much energy into producing blooms. I really want them to fill out a bit more. And once they do that, then I will stop picking these off. And you know what, they don't go to waste because I can always use these in a little bowl of water, make a nice little flower arrangement, let them float in it and pop it on the kitchen table. They are also edible, although I find their flavor quite overpowering. Oh, this is exciting. This is a double click cranberry cosmos. First time growing this variety and it's beginning to flower. Lots of flower buds on it too. It's growing here in this garden bed, which is actually my dual garden. So remember, a couple of months ago I mentioned that I'm trying to create a garden similar to what my idol Monty Don has in his garden in England where there's a lot of rich vibrant colours, purples, oranges, deep pinks. All of the dahlia tubers have grown quite a lot and actually you know what else has grown? This which is lemon verbena. It got cut down right down to the stump you can see there and here but it's starting to sprout back actually this is very common around the garden now a lot of the plants that got damaged by the storm or were just cut back in general are starting to shoot out now if we come over here you can see a similar thing is happening on the mulberry tree lots of fresh growth and one little thing to mention when i did cut back 
this tree and it's good to do this when pruning in general too is you try and cut at a slant and that stops any water resting on top and causing damage to your shrubs or trees the water just flows off like that so far so good with the dahlia cages seems to be holding everything in here nicely it will just be interesting to see how it goes once it gets a bit taller hopefully it will start to grow outwards and you won't see as much as this metal because the foliage will hopefully be covering it up if ever there is an example of the resilience of plants it would have to be in this little spot when the storm came i think it was about four weeks ago it broke off a lot of these pelagonium tops you can see here where the damage is i actually never got around to pruning it it's almost like it's self pruned nature did because look at it now everything is just filling out and same with the spirea japonica i hope i'm pronouncing that right i'll put the name up on the screen it got its top chopped off too but let's go and take a closer look it's covered in these flowers now aren't they just so pretty and these type of flowers that are small and open are really loved by pollinators and then over here this plant is the buddleia and that pretty much lost all its foliage and look at it now it's a big mass patch of green thanks so much for watching till the end i am telling you all of this rejuvenation has really motivated me to spend more time out here and maybe even try and see if i can squeeze in some more plants what you reckon anyway i'll see you all again next friday